Today we will talk about fundamentals of binaural hearing. Binaural hearing means that we are listening to an acoustic scene with our two ears. I would like to demonstrate this with a short video clip we recorded at our institute. Please listen to the cocktail party situation we recorded with a mono single microphone. And please use your headphones to uh, listen to the scene and switch off any equalizing settings of your computer. Now please try to follow the conversation and please try to localize the sound sources. So what exactly do you mean by the term cocktail party effect? Well, the cocktail party so effect can be explained exactly by the situation. Yes, yes. 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 Cocktail yes. party yes. scene yes. 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 people yes. 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 are talking to each other. I'm talking to you and you are able to understand and understand. At the same time, you are able to ignore all the other voices next to you. So this is due to our binary hearing. So this means it to be used to see you. Could you understand the conversation and could you localize the sound sources? I suppose not, because in a mono recording with a simple microphone, we don't benefit from our two ears. So we will now listen to the same scene again. We recorded now binary. To record the scene, we placed small miniature microphones in the entrances of the ear canals and uh, we recorded the scene again. So please listen to the scene and hear the difference. So what exactly do you mean by the term cocktail party effect? Well, the cocktail party effect can be described exactly by the situation. Yes. So we are here like in a cocktail party scene, you have many people around you, and people are talking to each other, I'm talking to you, and you are able to understand what I'm saying, at the same time you are able to ignore all the other voices next to you. So this is due to our binary hearing, so this means that the two ears to the scene, you are able to focus on one single source and at the same time you are able to ignore all the other interfering noise around you. So hopefully you were able to hear a huge difference between the two recordings. You should get an impression that the sources are distributed over space and you should also be able to better distinguish between the target speaker in front of you and all other interfering noises. In a binary scene we are able to understand what other people are saying while we are ignoring all other interfering noises. This is due to our hearing system, our binaural hearing system, because we are listening with our two ears. So we can um, separate in such a scene the target speaker from other interfering noises. This effect is also called cocktail party effect. So the difference to a mono recording is that the sound travels to our two ears, as you can see here, and on the way the sound is changed by reflection, by diffraction and by scattering due to our head, our torso and of course our pinnas. However, in contrast to a real scene in the video, you did not listen with your own ears. You listened through the ears of somebody else. So you could also not interact with the scene. You could not turn your head. In real life, you would do small head movements. You would interact with the scene. And so you would benefit from a dynamic um, listening to a binaural scene. This can be nowadays realized with dynamic real-time organization of a virtual scene, but this is out of the scope of this lecture today. To measure what happens on the path from the source to our ears, we can measure the so-called head-related transfer function. To do so, we usually place a loudspeaker, a measurement loudspeaker, at a certain position in the room, and then we place miniature microphones, or we use a dummy head for this recording, at the entrances of the ear canals. And then we can measure what happens from the pass from the loudspeaker to our ears. The so-called free field HRTF is defined as this measurement divided by a measurement of the same loudspeaker we used in the measurement uh, to the same microphone we used in the measurement, but placed in the center of the head with the head absent. So if we can get rid of all influences caused by the loudspeaker and by the um, microphone. And of course we do such a measurement in an anechoic chamber. This contains all directional information which uh, is due to our head and our shape of the pinna and our torso and the relevant effects 
are reflection, diffraction and scattering we see in this HRTF. And the effects are only due to the structure of the head, ear and torso. So now we will have a look into the HRTF and how the HRTF looks like in time and frequency domain. Okay, so here in this slide you see the impulse response measured from the left, from the loudspeaker positioned at uh, this side, so at approximately 45 degrees uh, from the left ear. You can see this in this graph. And now we look into the frequency domain of the left ear signal and you can see that for low frequency the run of the curve is really flat. And this is due to the fact that at low frequencies we have long wavelengths and the head does not interact with the sound wave um, which we used for the measurement. But at higher frequencies we see a certain structure of the HRTF from the left ear signal. Okay, so we will now have a look into the right ear signal and what we can see here is that the right ear signal, so the red path in the impulse response is shifted by some delay and you can also see when you look into the frequency domain that the magnitude of the um, left ear signal is always higher than the magnitude of the right ear signal. And this is due to the fact that the position of the um, loudspeaker is towards the left ear and the sound has to travel along the head. The head shatters the sound at the right ear and so um, we have less magnitude and also a time delay in the frequency response. Okay, to summarize, we can see in the impulse response that they have, we have an interaural time difference and in the um, frequency response we can see an interaural level difference. But now we move the sound source to the frontal direction. So the sound source is now placed in the median plane right in front of me. What you can see here is that we have almost no time difference between the left and the right ear and we can see that we have almost no level difference between the left and right ear signal. It would be completely the same if our head would be completely symmetric but this is not the case in real life. Okay, so to conclude, we have seen that when we measure a set of HRTF, we see on the one hand interaural characteristics, we see this in time structure by the time delay between the left and the right ear signal, we see this also in frequency domain when we have a look into the level differences. So we have interaural time and level differences. But when we moved the sound source to the frontal direction or somewhere in the median plane, we don't benefit from the uh, left and right ear difference, so we don't have any differences between the right and left ear. So we have only monaural characteristics we can see in the spectral information.